Hey everybody, hope you're having a, a good Sunday. I just uh, finished mowing my lawn while it snowed on me, so that was kind of an interesting experience. Uh, and then I came inside and spent some time doing some user story mapping, which I'll show you in a minute here. I've got a bunch of index cards spread on the floor of my kitchen that I'm building. And this is an idea that uh, came from Jeff Passan. He was an engineer on the Microsoft Xbox team, and I read his book about a year ago, so I did my best to kind of uh, try to follow the steps that I remembered. But I did watch a video of his this morning, a presentation he gave at Atlassian. And the, the concept was they were having trouble, uh, apparently with Xbox, uh, some of the users were having trouble kind of figuring out the game flow. And he came up with this idea of kind of simulating what it's like to be a user of the application uh, through note cards. And uh, the, the talk I watched this morning was actually at Atlassian, which is a digital product for, for organizing teams. He's a big, which is funny because he's a big believer in actually doing things at post-it notes, on boards, with index cards. And that's what I did. And he argues that there's kind of a spatial conception to the whole thing. And I, I having gone through this a few times, I do have to kind of agree with him that uh, sometimes writing it out by hand and being able to physically organize these things uh, does help a little bit. But let me show you what I got here. Essentially, you uh, walk through the experience of being a user. And so it's, it's a little hard to follow sometimes because we've got the user sign up here and there are multiple options for signing up so you can sign up with email Facebook Google and then the user login here and there's three different ways to get in let me clip this microphone on uh, and then when you're in of course there's there's three different roles here you're the market manager and the market manager needs to be able to uh, set up market events so you know the market is happening this place on Tuesday they need to kind of be able to control who can become a vendor eventually, so anybody just can't kind of kind of hedge in on their market. They want people who are uh, registered vendors. The customer product or purchase, the customer process is really to be able to go in, see the products, add them to the cart. There's Rosie. Say hi, Rosie. Pay for the product. Mark that they're here. Receive a push notification that. <laughs> <laughs> their order is ready and then pick up the order. Rosie, I need you to slide over, girl. And for the vendor, they need to be able to add and edit their profile, so set up their business name, uh, add and edit the products, receive orders, mark the order as complete, verify the customer's identity. And when you're planning for these kind of uh, applications, really you want to get it into the hands of testers as quick as possible. And if you have internal testers, you can really go bare bones. So what I've done is I've marked three different phases of development throughout here. Alpha will be kind of the bare bones, get it out to testing. And I think I'll use uh, Firebase's app tester. So anybody who wants to become a tester on this product can, uh, can do that when we get closer to the testing. Uh, but that's the alpha phase. So you do need to be able to log in and sign up. So I've done sign up with email, which we've already done, episode 18. Uh, I've got login with email, which we'll do next. And then the other things that were really essential for the first one were to be able to add a product if you're a vendor, receive your orders and mark them as complete, search the products as a customer, add to the cart, pay as a customer, and then pick up your order. Um, so if we could get just that out to testers, then we could probably catch a lot of bugs right up front. Second phase is beta, and so I'll introduce Google sign up and login in beta. There won't actually be anything with market maintenance until phase three, which I'm calling 1.00. Um, the reason being is that, you know, there's only really one market manager to start, and they're going to set up the events. We can just do that in the back end ourselves because we're the programmer for getting started. Uh, receiving push notifications will be part of beta for customers, and then being able to add and edit their profile as a vendor would be part of beta. And then lastly, we'll introduce this idea of uh, geolocator and knowing where the customer is. So that would include marking that they're here as the customer, which requires them being within a certain range of the market. Uh, verifying the customer, customer identity for the vendor, that's a nice feature to have, but it's not critical to get started with. And then being able to, as a market manager, 
um, create those market events in the app and not have to do it in the back end uh, is something we want to have before we go to 1.00, but we can test with uh, without that. And then the ability to invite and approve vendors would be something we'd want to have probably in that third phase uh, when we go to production. And then Facebook, you know, we've got a social media. Most people have a Google account, so a Facebook sign up is nice to have, not 100% essential for the early phases of the testing, so I've got that um, here. And then I put episodes on each of these cards to try to come up with an estimate of the amount of time. So we've done 18, and the next thing I want to do is log in with email. And so over here on this board, these colors are meaningless other than my markers kept running out of color. But we'll tomorrow do the login with the email. On uh, May 12th, we'll do the first of two sessions on the added edit product. So we'll do the form for the first part of that. The second part we will uh, do the edit, but the, most of that will be done with the card. Uh, we have a reusable widget for a text field, and so we're all set with forms and buttons. But we're going to have cards that display the product, and we're going to spend some time styling that up. So that looks good, and then we can reuse it throughout the app. Uh, on May 14th, we'll do search products. Uh, May 15th, we will add the, add the ability to add to the cart as the customer. Um, May 16th, we'll start pay for items. I've never done Stripe with Flutter, so that's a new experience for me, so I split that up. And then we'll have a planning session in between. So this we'll just kind of follow this pattern of every Sunday coming back and kind of checking in. So we'll, we'll do the second part of pay for items on May 18th. May 19th, we'll set up the ability for the vendor to receive those orders that have been paid for. May 20th, they'll be able to mark those orders as complete. And then May 21st, the customer will get their push notification. They'll be able to go uh, and pick up their order. And at May 21st, we should be able to push this out to App Tester for some alpha testing. So I haven't actually mapped out the beta portions and the 1.0. This could be a total disaster. This could like fall off schedule immediately, but I don't think so. Um, and this just gives us a rough outline of how we move forward. So I uh, hope that's helpful. Tomorrow we'll come back and we'll do this part, which is the login with email. Um, should be pretty easy. We've already done the sign up with email. But we also want to make it so that the once the user is logged in, uh, they can skip right by that that uh, that page and go right into the app. That's what you expect with an app. You sign in, it remembers you the next time. So we're also going to set up that logic to check when they open up the app and push them right to the landing page if they're already logged in. So that'll be next time. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you then.